Did you know that you can beat the entirety of Pokemon Violet with nothing more than a single Wiglet? Apart from a few instances where the game forces you to use another specific or more than one Pokemon, I was able to beat the game with a single shiny Wiglet. Here's how. First off, Wiglet can't actually be obtained until you get past the Poco Path Lighthouse. So for the first two battles, I had to use my starter. I chose Fue Coco so that Nimona would take Sprigatito, thus making the run a bit more challenging. After quickly defeating her, learning how to train my dragon, and torching our Squirrel, it was time for the star of the show to arrive. For this run, I wanted to use a shiny Wiglet, so I hunted one on my completed profile with shiny charm to speed things up. Chat voted on the name Barbara, and her reign of terror was about to begin. But before we could dominate the Paldea region together, Barbara needed a bit of experience. She smacked around a few helpless fish until she was strong enough to survive against actual threats. We continued to lay waste to a bunch of random Pokemon until Barbara reached level 12 and learned Aqua Jet, her first physical water type move. I wanted this move to stand a better chance at the upcoming Nimona battle outside Mesagoza. It was here that I learned something that would be very useful in the Victory Road story. You can lose to Nimona and still progress. That's right, apart from the final battle after the Elite Four, you never actually have to beat Nimona. This made things a bit easier and actually became a clever tactic later on. After your typical first day of school experience with bullies and getting in trouble for being on your phone, Barbara and I headed out west to Cortando. Since Barbara was a traded Pokemon, she was bound by level caps and would stop listening to me if she got too strong. Because of this, I prioritized clearing the gyms first. On the way to Cortando, I maxed out Barbara's attack EVs on some young gooses and worked on her speed EVs by demolishing Diglets. The first gym was where I learned just how frail Barbara was. Since Barbara couldn't get any higher than level 20 without disobeying, I opted to give her an X defense I found while leveling up to help her survive against Teddy Ursa. This worked and allowed me to pick up my first gym badge, also increasing Barbara's level cap to 25. Before progressing any further, I quickly dispatched the Cloth Titan to get a much needed speed boost on Maridon. I was now faced with a very awkward decision. By order of level, Gym 2 is Grass and Gym 3 is Electric, both of which are super effective against Barbara. I decided to try taking on Brassius first since he only had 3 Pokemon and the lower level team, but I forgot about one very important detail. Oh no! I just forgot about something. But I just forgot about Sturdy. Oh no! With Sudowoodo having Sturdy and being Grass Terra, Barbara would have no chance to survive against any of its attacks. Given this, I decided to try Iono as the second gym leader I took on, but this went even worse. I don't even have speed? Oh no! <laughs> Alright, Iono's gym is not an option. <laughs> I needed to figure out a way to get through Sudowoodo an Ice Beam felt like my only option. Luckily, you can pick up an Ice Beam TM without any navigational abilities restored to your legend. It's just southeast of Montenevera on a little island in the river. Confident in my new strategy, I returned to face Brassius where my resourcefulness was instantly rewarded with a first attempt freeze. With two badges obtained and a new level cap of 30, it was time to take on Iono for real. Before returning, I purchased a Mystic Water which helped give Barbara a bit of an edge against the Intimidate Luxios in this gym. However, it wasn't enough to get me through her very tanky belly bolt. A little boost from an X attack was all we needed to send Iono to an ad break and pick up badge number 3. I quickly picked off the giant bird titan at the top of Fall Mountain to gain the swimming ability and began crafting my strategy for the water gym. Since most of my strong moves at this point would not be very effective against all of Kofu's team, I went and picked up the move Foul Play from one of the Team Star bases. Foul Play does more damage the higher the opponent's physical attack stat is, which was going to be super helpful against Kofu. The Team Star bases, however, require you to use three Pokemon for the auto battle portion, so I went and caught two of the most useless Pokemon I could think of. With my game approved team of three Pokemon, I could now enter the Team Star base. I didn't actually use the Carps to battle the leader, Barbara was strong enough to take down Giacomo all on her own. With Foul Play now in hand, Kofu was an easy win and the fourth badge was mine. The world's most relatable gym leader was next after quickly picking off the Titan Orthworm. Kamala took a bit of AI manipulation and item dancing, but eventually Barbara was able to defeat it and then proceeded to sweep Larry's team. There were only three gyms left, but this is where things started to get extra rough. By order of level, Gym 6 is Rhyme, which is a double battle only gym. At this point, it was sometimes difficult to keep Barbara alive in a one-on-one -on -one situation. A two-on-one would be almost impossible. 
I decided to take a chance and deviate from the difficulty order of gyms this time. I tried to take on Tulip, but the trainers in her gym were still a bit too strong for Barbara. This left only one option, Grusha, the strongest of Paldia's gym leaders. Since Grusha's gym challenge doesn't involve any trainer battles, I was able to level up Barbara to the highest level she could be without disobeying and then immediately begin the Grusha battle. It took a few tries, but in the end, thanks to a little bit of luck, Barbara pulled off a massive upset. Barbara avoided Blizzard! That might be what I needed. I can get two X attacks in! I... I don't want to get my hopes up, but... There's a chance this could work. There's a real chance this could work. Because now I go bag. I heal. Hopefully the bear tick still tries to go for Aqua Jet. It did. 42. Perfect. Liquidation. This should kill. Okay. Bear tick dead. Here comes the Titan. The Titan has Ice Shard. But it didn't go for it! And we're still at level 45, so it will still. So Barbara will still listen. I hope this works. I really hope this works. We did it! Yes! <laughs> Let's go, Barbara! The increased level cap by defeating Grusha was exactly what Barbara needed to survive against the two trainers in Tulip's gym challenge. And after another strategic loss to Nimona, yes, this one was actually strategic, we were able to sweep Tulip's team and grab our seventh badge. The only gym that remained was the double battle against Rhyme that I had been fearing since the start of this run. Since it was a double battle, I brought one of the formerly acquired Magikarps as my second Pokemon. The entire gym battle was incredibly delicate. I felt prioritizing Barbara's defenses was going to be the smartest play since she was going to need to tank attacks from two Pokemon at the same time. A couple of X defenses were enough to buff up Barbara. From there, it was just a simple matter of playing the odds. Okay, it's an issue though because... Discharge has 100% accuracy, Play Rough can miss, or it can go for Phantom Force. So, because if I do nothing, if, if, if I heal, I'm dead because Toxtricity is going to use Discharge because it's super effective. I have to knock out the Toxtricity and hope that Houndstone goes for a Play Rough and misses, or queues up another Phantom Force. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so we outspeed. Now the question is, do I kill? Okay, I kill Toxtricity. Toxtricity's dead. We just gotta hope that Houndstone misses with a play rough or goes for a Phantom Force. Yes! <laughs> yes, we did it! We got all eight badges with just a wiglet! <laughs> <laughs> now that I had all eight gym badges in hand, Barbara's true strength was about to be unleashed. I grabbed some groceries from the port, popped a picnic, and then began a crusade of destroying every chancy I saw until Barbara was as strong as she could be. Being level 100, the remaining Team Star bases and Titan were easy for Barbara. Arvin was also fairly straightforward, however Penny and especially the Elite Four were still quite a challenge. Penny was an issue for a couple of reasons. Baby Doll Eyes, a priority move that reduces my physical attack, and Vaporeon's ability, Water Absorb. I was able to get around any Baby Doll Eyes by boosting Barbara's attack against Penny's Umbreon, which thankfully didn't do too much damage to me. For Vaporeon, I chipped away at it with a combination of Mud Slaps and Foul Plays. Sylveon was KO'd with one liquidation, leaving me with just the Elite Four before I could descend into the depths of Area Zero. The Elite Four was the hardest single segment of the run by far, with each member providing their own challenges to overcome. For Rika, that challenge was Claude Sire with Water Absorb. Thankfully, Rika's lead Pokemon Whizcash wasn't too big of a problem and I was able to buy some time and set up against it. From there, it was a clean sweep until the Claude Sire came out. In addition to having the Water Absorb ability, Rika's Claude Sire also knew Protect and Toxic. These moves made for a very slow fight, 
causing repeated healings, but with a little bit of patience, I was able to gradually chip away at its health and eventually defeated it. Poppy was next. She was actually the easiest of the whole league, largely due to Copperaja missing its opening attack and her sturdy Magnazone going for a light screen. Two down, three to go. Familiar Face Larry leads with Tropius, but thankfully it queued up a Solar Beam and wasn't able to hurt me. The Intimidate from Staraptor required me to boost my attack while staring down Altaria since it resists water. Thankfully Dragon Pulse didn't do too much damage, and a streak of liquidations was all that was needed to finish off Larry for the second time this run. Hassel was hands down the hardest single fight. His entire team resists water, and Flapple four times resists it. He leads with Noivern, which was slightly annoying, but manageable. Noivern and Dragalge both fell to liquidations, which wasn't an option for the upcoming Flapple. Since the AI would likely cause Flapple to go for a super effective grass type move, I threw a sucker punch, hoping it would be enough despite not being stab. A lucky crit secured the knockout punch against it, and then it was smooth sailing from here on out. Champion Gita was my next and final Elite Four battle. I understand now why people say Gita is an underwhelming champion. A single X attack was all that was needed for Barbara to sweep her entire team, even the two Pokemon that resisted water type attacks. Now comes the only Nimona battle you actually have to win. Her lead Lycanroc was fortunately not very strong and allowed for some extended setup which then led to a full team sweep. With all three stories concluded, it was time to venture into the depths of the Great Crater of Paldea. Because the final battle against the Protection Protocol is a scripted battle where you have to use your Mount Maridon, the challenge is technically won after the AI Professor is defeated. But first we have to get there. Of course this wasn't too hard, you're only stopped by a few random Pokemon along the way, all of which you fight in a 2 on 1 scenario, so we'll skip ahead to the Professor fight. Some of the Paradox Pokemon are quite tanky, so Barbara did need some setup. Iron Moth was quite difficult to do this against as it was capable of both poisoning and paralyzing me. After a few failed attempts, I tried just attacking the Moth since I was super effective against it. This actually worked and allowed me to set up against the Iron Hands instead. Although Iron Hands was super effective against me, it knows the move Fake Out, which AI Pokemon almost always lead with if they know it. I took advantage of this and boosted Barbara's attack, hoping the AI would fall into its usual pattern, which it did. From here, these futuristic Robo Pokemon were no match for Barbara. We get to see if this is enough to kill. We're good! Hands defeated! Thorns is easy, it's weak to me, and has no priority moves. Let's go. Bundle is potentially an issue because it resists me. I'm just gonna try it. I just gotta try it. Let's see what happens. It's enough! Yo, it was enough! Barbara's got this! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> we beat all of Pokemon Violet with just a Wiglet! <laughs> And there you have it, Pokemon Violet beaten with nothing more than a single shiny Wiglet. If you enjoy challenge runs like this, be sure to subscribe for more content and come by for a live stream. Next I'm gonna try taking on Pokemon Scarlet with just a single Scatterbug.